Welcome to Epstein Becker Green's Employment Law This Week podcast. I'm George Whipple. On June 24th, 2022, almost a year ago, the Supreme Court handed down its decision in Dobbs v. Jackson, overturning Roe v. Wade and removing federal protections for people seeking abortions. Many employers feared the resulting patchwork of state laws and regulations would cause major disruption to their benefits offerings. But Epstein Becker Green's Susan Gross Shalinsky says things haven't quite played out that way. Some states have passed laws relating to aiding and abetting abortion-related activities. While employers may fear that providing travel benefits or otherwise assisting employees in obtaining an abortion might implicate them under these laws, many of these laws have either not gone anywhere or have actually been overturned or deemed unconstitutional. While employers have not seen the more dramatic outcomes that they were prepared for post-Obs, there are a number of areas where questions remain, particularly when it comes to employee accommodations. Epstein Becker Green's Delia DeShane highlights some important considerations for employers. Now that states are able to enforce limitations on abortion care, um, the need for uh, employers to consider the accommodations that they have to give to their employees who might object to abortions are, is, is even more acute. And that will continue to be a concern as the landscape in this area continues to evolve, as will the need for employers to think about the benefits that they provide their employees and the limitations on the scope and availability of those benefits. Delia also cites fertility treatment as an area where employers who offer fully insured benefits programs might encounter state law restrictions post Dobbs. With challenges to the FDA's approval of Mifepristone still pending, along with other related court cases, the overall impact of Dobbs on employer benefit programs remains an evolving story. Epstein Becker Green's Lucas Peter Hans has more. Currently, we have an environment where states with competing political views are proposing and passing legislation that either increase or restrict access to abortions in addition to the individuals or entities that fund or provide the procedures. Furthermore, although we have not seen to date any successful litigation restricting an employer's ability to provide abortion coverage to group health plan participants, we do not know what the future will bring as this area of law evolves. To most effectively manage the benefit programs, Employers should contact the individuals or entities responsible for governing their plans and ensure that there are no glaring provisions that could create issues if group health plans come under increasing scrutiny going forward. Thank you, Lucas, Delia, and Susan. And thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time. This podcast is presented by Epstein, Becker, and Green, PC. All rights are reserved. This audio recording includes information about legal issues and legal developments. Such materials are for informational purposes only and may not reflect the most current legal developments. These informational materials are not intended and should not be taken as legal advice on any particular set of facts or circumstances, and these materials are not a substitute for the advice of competent counsel. The content reflects the personal views and opinions of the participants. No attorney-client relationship has been created by this audio recording. This audio recording may be considered attorney advertising in some jurisdictions under the applicable law and ethical rules. The determination of the need for legal services and the choice of a lawyer are extremely important decisions and should not be based solely upon advertisements or self-proclaimed expertise. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers.